today we're going to be talking about whether or not a 5511 Leonidas is worth it or if you should just save your legendary commander sculptures. What's going on guys? Cheers! Now, as you guys saw from my Zenith of Power video, you'll know that Zenith lined up with Mightiest Governor, and thus by doing so well in Zenith, I was able to win Mightiest Governor and get enough sculptures to get my Leonidas to 5511. I actually got that last skill to two because he already had five in his first skill, so there were some commander sculptures left over. But for the purposes of this video, I mean, this is only a 1% change. It's really what I'm going to show you here is what you can expect from a 5511, roughly speaking. Now, I've wanted to get Leonidas to 5511 for a while because other content creators, as well as other good players that I play with here in Rise of Kingdoms, has have told me that a 5511 Leo is a great and, dare I say, an exceptional combo with a Guan Yu primary, which makes sense. They have a lot of great synergy together. But what I wanted to know is, how good is a 5511 Leonidas with a Guan Yu that isn't expertise? Uh, because the expertise on Guan Yu does give you an increase of 15% skill damage for three seconds. When he gains a shield, Leonidas does randomly give you a shield. However, you, you miss out on that benefit if your Guan Yu isn't maxed. And I think many of you, if you're especially if you're free to play, probably have a 5155 Guan Yu or something similar. For example, I have a 5255 Guan Yu. And the reason that this second skill, you know, could be at one, two, three, or four doesn't matter for the purposes of this video is because this only matters when you're attacking cities. So in the open field, it doesn't matter what this one is as long as it's not expertise. Okay. So that's kind of the groundwork for this video is a 5511 Leonidas worth it. If you have a Guan Yu that isn't expertise, but his first, third, and fourth skills are maxed. Now, the way that I've gone about testing this isn't exactly perfect, okay? Because testing in Rise of Kingdoms is never perfect. Let's be real. No matter what method you really use to test, there's always going to be a flaw because fighting in the open field is way more unpredictable. If you don't own the field, you could be swarmed, or maybe for some reason people just ignore you. There's tons of variables when it comes to actual war in this game. So I'm going to tell you guys how I tested these combinations and feel free to comment down below what you think about this testing method. But I will say that this testing method is extremely limited and it focuses only on a single aspect of the combo, which is essentially DPS, right? I just want to know how much damage is this combination doing over time. I did multiple testings in Expedition 70-1, and I was able to take down a couple of important pieces of information. So if you see me looking over here, this is my spreadsheet, okay? So what I did take note of is how long does it take the commander combination to defeat this city? You're going to see some footage playing in the background, and that's going to be sort of the results that I was able to get from this testing. So I wanted to keep track of how long did it take from the moment that Guan Yu starts hitting the city to the moment that the city is destroyed. What time frame does that look like? I also kept track of how many units is does Guan Yu have left at the end of that city rally. And also, we did a little bit of, of uh, calculations to see approximately how many units of the city were defeated per second, right? Which isn't exactly damage per second, but it's kind of close. Okay. Just to give you sort of a general idea. So of course we first started off by testing Guan Yu with Leonidas secondary. We did two tests of this just to get a little bit of variation. There wasn't too much variation between the two. Of course, a good test will have a much larger sample size, but this is just a really short video to give you a general idea of the outcome. Next, I wanted to do sort of a baseline test, right? So let's say you're a player with a 5155 Guan Yu and you don't have a 5511 Leo, who would you have, right? So what I, what comes to mind for me is Sun Tzu, right? A Guan Yu Sun Tzu isn't really a combo that you see too much in the open field, but it is a combination that every single one of you has access to, right? So I was going to compare in this video, uh, a 5511 Leo to an expertise Sun Tzu. Okay, so we do have a few tests here of a Guan primary Sun Tzu secondary, and we recorded the same results. How long did this rally take? How many units were remaining and how many enemy units were defeated per second? Finally, I wanted to compare this to a, a Guan Yu 5155 Guan Yu, or in my case, a 5255 Guan Yu with an expertise Alexander 
secondary right and obviously spoiler this is going to perform way better than anything else because alexander is a god and he's expertise right he's an expertise legendary of course he's going to perform better but i wanted to get an idea of how much better does the alex perform than the leo and conversely with the sun Tzu, which is sort of our control group here because again that's a very basic commander everybody has now before i go over the results here i do want to just say a few things now first of all when you're hitting a city and you're testing in the form that we're testing in this video you're not accounting for a lot of things and i mentioned this earlier okay but really all that we're doing in this video is testing single target damage factor that's really all it is because we're only hitting one city and i've made sure and you can watch throughout these the video i've made sure that guan or, or Sun Tzu or whoever doesn't hit the other armies that you see uh, around the city it's only hitting that city and that's it so you have to ask yourself how useful is it knowing the single target damage per second for this combination it's not that useful right it's a general idea of the combination uh, you know of, of these combos in the open field but again if you're in the open field you're going to be chasing targets which means some sometimes you're not going to be hitting or doing anything right you're also going to be having the aoe on guan hit multiple targets which means you're actually going to perform better with guan yu than you may see in this in this uh video you're going to get more value out of that aoe right especially with leonidas who has aoe sun tzu who has aoe and alex who doesn't right so in that instance the alex combination may get you a little bit less than you may be getting with the other combinations here that get value out of the additional aoe so again i'm sure many of you have already commented down below telling me how bad of a testing method this is i would like to say thank you for the engagement on the video the youtube algorithm loves your comment and thus so do i i hear you i get that this is not the best way to test this but again i just wanted to a quick and easy way to get a general idea of sort of the D dps combination uh, and output of these pairs okay with all that out of the way and with the massive disclaimer and I already know I'm still going to get comments about it, but regardless, uh, let's go over some of the results. Okay. So we're going to just talk about the averages here. I did two trials per, per combination. So we did six trials total, um, for the Guan Leo combo, the average amount of troops remaining in the army or the rally after the city was destroyed was 1,038,726 total number of troops defeated is the same because the city was defeated in both instances. The city does have 2,115,000 units. Uh, there was a slight difference in the amount of time that it took. The first trial took a minute, uh, I'm sorry, two minutes and nine seconds. The second trial took two minutes and 12 seconds, three second difference, not that much variation there. But in total, if we take the amount of time that it took on average and the amount of units that it was that they defeated on average, the amount of units defeated was 16,209 units per second. Okay. Keep that in mind. Take notes, right? Write them down. I'm moving that right now. Write them down in your notes on your phone and your notebook, whatever. Next, we're going to take a look at the Guan Yu Sun Tzu averages. Okay. On average, the amount of units remaining was 1,009,971. And using all the same methods as before, the amount of units defeated was 14,538 units per second. So obviously that's a bit of a drop off there. Next, we can take a look at the Guan Alex averages. And on average, these trials had 1,109,361 units remaining. So significantly higher amount of units remaining there. And the amount of units defeated per second was 22,745 units per second. So have you written all those down? Okay. You can check my math here. All right. I want, I want to be held accountable. Okay. So if we take a look at primarily the guan leo averages versus the guan sun Tzu averages what we're going to find is that the guan leo had a 10.3 percent increase in units defeated per second as compared to the guan sun Tzu. okay so more or less it's 10 percent better okay and again i know that we are strong this is a hyper generalization okay but roughly speaking the Guan Leo was 10% more effective at defeating units over time. Okay. And again, that's single target damage factor. When we compare to the units remaining, they were actually pretty close. Okay. It had a 2.7% increase in units remaining. Now that's very small. That could be very uh, variance, right? That could be just statistical fluctuation. 
right? We, if, maybe if we did, you know, 30 trials of each, it would be roughly the same or maybe even lower, right? So again, that's a very small amount, not that significant, but it's worth mentioning here. Now, if we compare the Guan Leo to the Guan Alex, we see a huge jump in effectiveness, right? We see that the amount of units defeated per second goes up by 28.7%, right? So way more effective at damage. And this makes sense because Alex does a lot of single target damage factor, whereas Sun or whereas um, Leonidas is doing a very tiny damage factor. It is AOE though. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then when we compare the amount of units remaining, um, it is 6.3% higher with the Alexander. So again, it, it's a pretty, pretty that's that is significant that's over five percent right i would say that is a significant number and you know again we have to take this with a grain of salt there is randomness involved in a lot of the skills here right Guan Yu's primary skill has randomness involved alexander's skill with the single target damage factor has randomness involved right there's lots of randomness involved with some of these commanders so again i just want to make it clear that this is a very hyper generalization but it should give you guys a sort of an idea of where these commanders and how these commanders stack up against one another when paired with Guan Yu. So obviously the Guan Alex was by far the best performing here. Second place was Guan Liu. Third place was Guan Sun Tzu. Now I actually find this really interesting because if we take a look at Leonidas and we have to sort of compare Leo to Sun Tzu and see what each of these commanders are doing for Guan Yu, right? Leonidas is giving you 30% increased health for three seconds. So it's not all the time. It's only for three seconds. He does have a very small AOE. And if the target is silenced, which they will be because of Guan Yu's primary, um, they will take an extra 50% damage. Now, I actually don't know, and maybe this is my own fault, but this isn't very clear. Do Does the target take 50% increased damage uh, for all three seconds? Or do they take 50% increased damage factor from Leonidas, Leonidas's active skill. That's a huge difference right there. So if you guys know the answer, comment down below. The second skill gives you 30% increased defense when you're full of infantry units and you gain 15, an extra 15% rage, which is nice, but really this, uh, you have to be fighting for a long time for this to really take effect, right? Because you, you need to generate rage fast enough to actually reduce the amount of turns in between skills, right? That's really all that matters. It doesn't matter if you're generating more rage, if it doesn't reach the threshold to which your skill goes off a turn sooner. That's the only point where you'll actually see benefit of this. And thus, you know, it'll have to seeing this benefit. It's really difficult to measure this benefit from my perspective. Okay. You're also getting the shield, right? So when your troops are reduced to 50% or lower incoming attacks have a chance to activate a shield, which can absorb a large amount of damage, damage factor of 600 for three seconds as it's activated, all infantry units led by this commander also gain 3% attack for three seconds. Okay. So this is one aspect of Leo that wasn't factored into the testing, right? Because this only happens under 50%, which if you're in the open field, Field, you shouldn't get below 50, but inevitably you probably will. So this is a benefit that Leonidas has over Sun Tzu entirely. And then finally this, you know, while on the map, each attack is a 25% chance to grant troops led by this commander, 5% increased skill dam uh, increased damage for five seconds. It can stack up to four times. Uh, this is really nice, but again, this is something that needs a long time to, for it to stack and be consistent. Otherwise you're not really getting too much, right? So this could stack up to 20% if you uh, only have this at one. So let's compare that to Sun Tzu. Okay. So Sun Tzu has an AOE that can hit up to five targets damage factor of 800. And then on the next turn, it does 200. So in fact, that's actually a more powerful AOE than Leonidas because Leonidas, even with Guan's uh, buff, right? With the, with the silence, it does 900 damage factor to three targets. This does essentially a thousand to five tar up to five targets, right? You also gain 50 rage for each target hit by the skill. So you're actually gaining rage from Sun Tzu's AOE, which I think is probably comparable or maybe even better than the rage that you're getting from the second skill on Leonidas. So here we're seeing a better AOE on Sun Tzu and arguably a better rage engine on Sun Tzu as well. We take a look at the third skill, 10% damage taken reduction and 10% constant infantry health. Whereas we're comparing to 30% increased defense for infantry on Leonidas's second skill. Also, Leo has that shield. Keep that in mind. Finally, we get a 20% increase in skill damage, which is actually better than the 15% for three seconds that you would get if your Guan was expertise and happened to get a shield during his skill, right? So it, this is why I wanted to compare Sun Tzu 
oh my god voice crack sun tzu to leonidas because they're both doing aoe they're both infantry commanders they both have rage regeneration and so from my perspective i would think that sun tzu would actually perform very similar or maybe even better than leonidas however from the testing we do see that leo does perform uh you know about 10 percent more damage per second with a similar amount of troops remaining at the end so that begs the question is it worth investing in a 5511 leonidas when you have sun tzu who can perform almost as good right and and you know 10 percent. i would say that is pretty significant i would say that's a lot more damage that you're outputting from leo um my question is where is that coming from right where where is that extra damage coming from because sun tzu has the better aoe and the skill damage increase on the last skill that's i don't know to me sun tzu if you just look on paper i would think sun tzu would actually be better but it looks to me like uh the guan leo is better overall really investing in a 5511 leonidas is up to you right how many sculptures do you have left what are the goals of your account and what do you want to get out of your guan yu what i would recommend is you know if you already have an expertise alex and you don't really have anything else you can do with that alex your guan alex is going to be a far better combination than anything else that we've seen in this video it's just absolute crazy damage output really really good the benefit that leonidas has is that he's a little bit more tanky than the alex because he has that extra defense on the second skill here and under 50 percent, he does get that shield which i know that alex has a shield as well but it's something to worth taking into account plus he has the health on his primary skill which health is super super good for infantry as well so really the question is do you want to free your alex up to use somewhere else whether you pair him with chook or with heralds whatever you're going to do with your alex maybe pair him with esong right you could do other things with your alex by investing in the investing into the leonidas and having a good solid uh, secondary for your guan for a cheap investment cost even though it's cheap though it's still 180 legendary commander sculptures to get your hands on leonidas and get him to that 5511 state so is it really worth it well that is really up to you and where you're at with your account i think there's very few commanders that get you this much value out of a 5511 legendary right so it's something to keep in mind but ultimately you have to make the decisions for your account you know based on the results here do you think that leonidas is worth it and do you have something better you can use your alexander with anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so the rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new around here subscribe to the channel click that bell that'll notify you the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always comment down below your thoughts on leonidas i would love to hear from you guys as well and all of my social media links are in the description below as well as a link to save 10 percent off of gamer subs and you can save off of nord vp oh my goodness gracious what's going on you can save off nord vpn as well anyway guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace